in order to hear your questions, we'll need to have them mic'd. And so therefore, we're going to ask you to wait. There are, I think, pens and paper available. If you want to write down some questions you might have or that might come to mind during the presentation, so as at the end, you'll be able to remember what it was that you wanted to ask. And so Deacon Halbert has these. And if you need them, just raise your hands. He'll be glad to pass them out to you. <coughs> so the three books that I want to show you tonight are this. The first one is the Holy Bible. The second is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And the third is the Code of Canon Law. Our faith is based on what is in the Bible and on sacred tradition. That's how our faith has been built, from Jesus. And so the life of Jesus is here in the Bible. And we use that and sacred tradition. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains our faith, exactly what we believe. Not what other people say we believe, but what we believe. And the Code of Canon Law is there to help for us to implement that so as we know that what we're doing is the right way, the right thing to do. Deacon Albert, when he talks about the Catechism in particular, has a great way of describing it. He calls the Catechism the owner's manual for the Catholic faith. And I think it's a really good analogy. And so our faith is like something we own. That's what we have, that faith that we keep, that we pass on that has passed on down through us for the last 2,000 years and that we get to pass on to the children and they get to pass on. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, then, is the owner's manual of that. And if the Catechism of the Catholic Church is the owner's manual, then canon law would be the maintenance and repair manual of that. So if you own a car, these terms will probably, you know what they're talking about. And the Code of Canon Law is designed in order to help us. It's designed to help us to keep us on track. It's worldwide. It's numbered. And it's done so, so as no matter what language you speak, once you look at the Code of Canon Law, if you know the particular canon you're looking for, it'll have a number, and you can tell exactly what it is, regardless of what language it's printed in. And so that was the reason that they always put numbers to it. So the Code of Canon Law is a body of laws that were adopted by the authority of the Pope in cooperation with the bishops to help in the running of the church and its members. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is the Code of Canon Law for the Latin Rite of the Catholic Church. The Eastern Catholic Church has its own Code of Canon Law, as does the Orthodox Churches and the Anglican Churches. Canon Law is mostly based on immutable divine law. That means it can never be changed. And also on natural law, which can change as more information becomes available about nature. And so things can change with natural law, but with divine law, it always stays the same. And that's what canon law's basis is. The word canon comes from the Greek word kanon, K-A-N-O-N which means it's a rule, or a code, or a standard, or a measure. 
they all have the same meaning within the word canon. But it can also mean a list. And that's why the book of the, that were picked for the Bible, in the Bible there are all different books. And these were put together and put into one particular book, which we call the Bible. This happened, this was done by the Catholic Church. And it became known as the canon. And basically what that meant, it was the agreed list of what books should be in the Bible. And it became called the canon of the Catholic Church, meaning the books that were approved. And so that's what ended up in the Bible. That's what we have. And that's how the name got there, because of the list or the rule. The Catholic Church has the oldest continual functioning legal system in the Western world. It predates European civil law. In fact, it goes all the way back to the first century, to the apostles, to St. Peter and St. Paul and all the other disciples, to the Council of Jerusalem. At that council, they were trying to decide whether Gentile men who were converting to Christianity had to be circumcised. Since all the original disciples were Jewish, many of them thought that it should be a requirement. However, St. Paul disagreed, and after much debate and prayer, his views were agreed upon. As more councils were held during the coming centuries, more canons began to be added to this list of canons. Eventually, in the 11th century, a monk called Gratian combined all the canons, canons into one group of laws. And they were published by Pope Gregory IX. But by the 19th century, these canons had grown to over 10,000 in number, some of which became hard to reconcile with each other. And so during the reign of Pope Pius X, he ordered the creation of the first code of canon law in a single volume. After much study and review, Pope Benedict XV published this canon, new code of canon law in 1917. Then, in 1959, Pope John XXIII called for an updating of that, what had become known then as the 1917 canon. He knew that it would be necessary because once the completion of Vatican II had taken place, it would be called for to change all the codes. And so again, after much study and debate and review, Pope John Paul II published what is now called the New Code of Canon Law. And this was done in 1983. This code now has 1,752 canons, which is a big drop from the over 10,000. Now, if we were to try and cover the whole code of canon law, we would be here for days. And so, since our time is short here tonight, we thought that we would cover the area that most people would have questions. This would be the sacraments, we feel. And we will cover six of the seven sacraments. They will be baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, reconciliation, anointing of the sick, and marriage. We feel that most people will not have questions about holy orders, although if you do, we'll be certainly glad to look it up. But at this point, what we felt for most people would be that those would be the areas, the six um, sacraments that people would have most questions on. And so we will be covering those things tonight. 
the sacraments were given to us by Christ. And so therefore, they are there to strengthen us for our lives. They're there from right from the beginning, from baptism, right through to the anointing of the sick. Using the code of canon law, make sure that all of the sacraments that are done are done as they should be done. And so with that, we'd like to go straight into now talking about each individual sacrament. Now I'd like to invite Deacon Albert to come forward. Thank you, Deacon Dave. Is my voice as bassy as Deacon Dave's? A little bit, huh? I'm a little bit of a tenor. Deacon Dave is a bass. That's why you hear him basses, the bass there in the speaker. So if that's the case, you know, I apologize for that. You know, when we got this um, training from the diocese, first they had all the priests for almost one day, right, Father, for this new, new code of canon law. And they called all the, the, the deacons to come over to the chancery. The bishop was there and all the uh, judicial you know, uh, the code of canon law people that works there. Uh, when they call us, they told us to be there around six, and we thought it's going to be like only an hour or an hour and a half. It turned out to be almost a three-hour presentation. We don't have three hours here tonight, so we're going to try to compress that three hours into this 45 minutes. I guess we have left for even 25 minutes, I think. And so we're going to run through these slides here very quick. And so what I encourage, though, is if you have any questions as we go on with what we cover in here or if we didn't cover, Write it down on the piece of paper that you have. I have more pencils in here and uh, cards. And then uh, at the end, we'll try to cover most of them. If we, not, if we cannot cover most of them, we'll answer them some way. This presentation will actually be available online. The recording will be available online because a lot of people are not here. So whatever we covered here tonight, you know, it can also be shared by the other people. So is that, is that fair enough? So I was told I was supposed to cover baptism. Let me see. First of all, baptism, confirmation, Holy Eucharist, as well as you know, is the, all the sacraments of initiation. So I'll cover baptism, Deacon Day will cover confirmation, and Father Leo will go cover Holy Eucharist, penance, and anointing of the sick. And then I'll try to see if I can wrap up with marriage, if we have time in there. So Deacon Day explained to you what sacrament is, according to the, to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I just put in here on Canon 840, the sacraments is defined as the sacraments of the New Testament instituted by Christ the Lord and entrusted to the church as they are the actions of Christ and the church stand out as the signs and means by which the faith is expressed and strengthened. Worship is rendered to God and the sanctification of humankind is effected and they thus contribute in the highest degree to the establishment, strengthening and manifestation of ecclesial communion. Therefore, both the sacred ministers and the rest of the Christian faithful must employ the greatest reverence and the necessary diligence in their celebration. I mean, I don't have to explain this. You know, like I said, this is going to be on, on the website if you need to, to study this more. But I just want to show this to you where that's defined in the canon law. And there's, there's more explanations about it in the sacraments. I know this is real small for you to read out there. I don't think you can even read it from around here, right? Yeah, it's too, it's too small. But I just put it in there just to show you some more explanations of what the canon law says about the sacraments. For example, um, just to look at one that's important. Canon 842, one who has not received baptism cannot be validly admitted to other sacraments. So baptism basically tells you is the introduction to all the sacraments. You can't jump to confirmation, Holy Eucharist, or penance if you haven't been baptized yet. We all know that, right? And that's in the code of canon law. So, you know, we didn't invent that. Nobody in the Pope didn't invent that. It's all in there. So baptism is the gate to the sacraments necessary for salvation, in fact, or at least in intention by which men and women are freed from their sins, are reborn as children of God and configured to Christ by an indelible character, are incorporated in the church and is validly conferred only by washing with true water together with the true required form of water.